I've come back to the first experiment with watercolour using cling film, just the two shades of blue, <coughs> cerulean and cobalt blue. Um, looking back to my photographs, I've got a feeling this little rocky scene is going to work quite well with it. So I'm going to use a simple palette of yellow ochre, some cadmium red, and a tiny bit of cobalt blue to create a pale sort of pinky rocky colour. I'm just going to follow the stripes using a flat brush. Just create the illusion of rocks, not in any exact manner, but in a sort of free-flowing manner. So we've got the idea of rocks with little gaps between them, some bubbling surf. Okay, just following the angles here. And putting a few more transparent rocks just over the top of the blue here, but it creates the idea that maybe they're beneath the surface of the, of the water. <clears throat> so that creates a source of Rocky look. My plan is though to use the figure as well. Firstly though, just grabbing a smaller semi brush, so one of these Chinese brushes, and I'm going to put some of the cobalt blue, some of the cadmium red, create a dark purple, a <coughs> little bit of the yellow ochre. So we're getting a, a brown, and now I can come in and I can paint the sort of cracks in the rocks. Again, I'm following the patterns that the cling film has created. So the rocks are taking on new shapes. So this isn't an abstract painting, but it's abstracted, if you follow me. The idea is it's just taking the idea and working into it. So I've now mixed up a little bit of a stronger blue. I've just added, basically, some cerulean blue to the brown mix to create some little darker passages sort of where the water's coming in between the rocks. Just create a, a sense of space, if you like. So I'm taking the, the colours in each area. I'm taking these areas, you know, responding to the area here and so on. But not following it exactly. Just literally painting, I'm holding the brush right at the end, just flicking shapes in. And I'm now going to go back to that brown and see if I can just add a little bit more texture. little trick here. You can get... I've just got a, a water diffuser here, spray water, and occasionally just a tiny puff of water just onto the drying paint or speckle it slightly. You won't see it straight away, so don't overdo it. Just let it set, sink in. Um, whilst that's sinking in, I just got to go back and see if there's anything else I can do to improve my my rocks, the shadows, and so on. I'm just I'm also very conscious that apart from going from an effect, I'm trying to create a composition. Part of the trick of creating a composition is to respond to the shapes in a, in a, a dynamic way, a way which creates balance and harmony, but also creates an interesting pictorial surface where you've got different shapes playing with each other, responding to each other. <clears throat> and so on. 
So the last, last bit I'm going to just put in a little cer cerulean wash right at the top just to create the idea of the water. I haven't pre-wet this by the way, I'm just taking strokes and addings with the surface. The water bubbling away, creating a little bit of interest in the, in the distance. So what I need to do now is come back to the figure. Um, figures can be tricky, so I would advise getting one of these, the pencil. I'm going to make the figure a bit digger, bigger. I'm also going to look at the shapes in here and see where I can fit the figure, I think. I want to use the shadow and I want to locate the figure, mostly in silhouette. I want to catch a little bit of light on that figure, so I'm going to use this a lighter up here, so I'm going to create the head, just a little oval shape coming into the body at an angle. There's a rucksack on the back, I'll, I might use that. And we're looking down on the figure, so proportions tend to be a bit distorted, but if you look at the, the um, <coughs> The figure, this is my son actually, a few years ago, when he was probably 20. Um, his head is about a seventh of his overall height, so if once you've established the size of the head, you can literally do this, so on the paper it's probably about a centimetre, so two, three, four, five, six more, hang on, is that six or seven altogether, just do a double check, it's always worth it, three, four, Six, and we need to come down a little bit further. So here are the feet, and he's got his hand in his pocket. Oh no, it's hanging just hanging slightly beside his pocket, just hanging loose. So that's the main shape, and we've got the shadow coming off it, which falls down between the rocks and comes over. So I'm going to use. I'm changing this slightly to make it read right. <clears throat> so let's come back to our shadowy mix. The brown and the blue, basically, that I mixed up earlier. Let's start with the shadow. I think it's almost dry enough to take this. Look at shadows carefully because they pre they're not necessarily what you expect. As they, especially as they fold over shapes and so on. So we've got the shadow falling into the gap between the rocks then coming back on the next drop down. Now let's come to that. Have I got that far enough? Yeah, I think let's just bring it over a little bit more. And the shadow, the strength of the shadow is going to make a very strong Compositional feature as well as as well as create a sort of an illusion. So now I'm mixing some cadmium red and yellow ochre to create a strong sort of shadowy colour of the flesh in silhouette. So here's the, here's the start of the bottom figure. Legs. This is a, it's a sort of brownie orange colour I've mixed out of that. Arm coming down, and then we can go into a, a pale. It's got a scarlet top on, so we go to a, just a pure cadmium red here. I'm just wondering about. No, I'm going to leave. I'm not going to bother with the rucksack. I'm just going to do it. So he's standing there looking at the sea. Shorts are a sort of grey colour, so I'm just going to use the cerulean blue with a little bit of brown in it, just so they stand out against the colours of the water behind. And the actually, the rucksack is hiding where his other shoulder. I'm to make this bit up slightly, but if it's easier to do the figure with the rucksack, then do it. And the head 
again a sort of orangey brown. Just going to add a little bit more cobalt to the mixture this time. And we've got the shadow from the head on the top of the shoulders. So I'm just going to put some cadmium and cobalt blue together to connect that up here. Just create a little bit of a shadow falling down the back. Now the trick of this is to use some highlights here to create the uh, sense of the figure. So what I'm doing is I'm taking some white gouache. Now if I had anticipated doing this painting from the beginning I could have masked out these little highlight areas <coughs> with masking fluid and that would have been fine but it was done as an experiment I didn't know that was going to happen. So you can use gouache as a way of getting your white colour back again. Now, the, um, <clears throat> I don't think it's a bad thing to use gouache because body colour or gouache or Chinese white has been used by watercolourists for centuries. Turner, Constable, Gertin, they all used gouache. So um, it's not a cheat really. Just a bit of a cheat. I'm also using a little bit of the gouache with the cadmium just to create a brighter pink for the where the sun is catching the top of his shoulder. Here. And I'm going back into the hair just to put a little bit of brown. Clean my brush up. Let's do this again. I think actually I'm going to take a bit of umber here. Just because my palette's a bit dirty, a bit of umber. This is raw umber, but you could use bat or raw umber. But what I'm trying to do is just create a little bit more shadow. And I'm going to just lift the head up a tiny bit from where I've had it. I've got my pencil mark higher up, I'm just going to bring it up a little bit higher. Now I'm going to go <coughs> back into the arm, back into the hand, little touches of white, just little flashes. And on his neck, I'm just squeezing the tip of the brush with my fingers to get a little tip of, just like this, just to touch it so I can get a little tip and put some highlights onto the neck. This is just using the, the cad red, a little bit of ochre and white. So though I've put something like a realistic figure into this painting, the surroundings are very much stylized and <clears throat> created out of the natural or the, or the way that the cling film has produced these sort of little uh, pockets of colour and folds in the rocks. So it's just little points of light I'm trying to put into it to create a bit of form. And then lastly, the Indian brush again, going back to my gouache. Now gouache is, um, if you use gouache, it's a very, um, let me just, I'll show you the palette. It's a, it comes out of a tube in a, quite a sticky mixture. And that's great for doing little highlights like I've just done. <clears throat> Um, sometimes you need to get it to water it down a bit to make it flow with the watercolour. So all I'm going to use it for now is just a tie with the water. It's for a few little flicks and splatters to suggest that there's just picking up actually again on the patterns that are underneath. There's a bit of sparkle in the water as it's lapping up against the rocks.
few more touches. Don't overdo it. Cole, you're being probably a little bit over ambitious, but there we are. Let's just see if it works. With watercolour though, <clears throat> you can go back, you can correct mistakes. A lot of people think once it's on, it's on. You can you know, damp a colour, use a sponge, use a tissue. <clears throat> Little touches can often get you back to the paper. And in other videos I'll be showing you some other tricks of how to do that. But I just wanted to create a loose dynamic effect in this in this sketch, so hopefully hopefully it's right. So there we go. A sort of interpretation of the scene. So I bring the scene over, I'm just gonna show it to you closer. So we've got the scene here. So it's like I've sort of zoomed into that sort of part of it. And here's the painting. Thank you.